documentation I've received from this council. I have a response in, uh, as of my report. Ladies and gentlemen, my recent mail outs have raised concerns with the administration pertaining to the information that I shared with this village. I have resorted to using these mail outs as it is, in my opinion, I've been discriminated against by the mayor and when I seek to answer questions from the public at regular uh, council meetings. The mayor stated that I was to answer these questions on my own time. These mail outs are at my own expense and reflect what I've observed since being elected. It is now public knowledge that the CAO, the mayor, and the two re-elected councillors have obtained legal advice to guide them on what legal action to take against me. This includes their demands that I publicly apologize for the allegations concerning their perceptions of defamatory comments towards them and the CAO. Based on the extensive documentation that was presented to me, it is abundantly clear that the village is sparing no expense. In this documentation, it claims that I have to be given a reasonable amount of time to respond. Currently, the majority of this administration has legal action against them, and you, the taxpayers, are fully funding their defense. Yet the CAO has informed me that I'm not entitled to legal representation, and I've been advised to seek legal counsel immediately. This type of undemocratic behavior from the administration is very disturbing, and another shameful attempt to censor the flow of information concerning the affairs of the village. It is abundantly clear that this administration should be financing their own legal representation for their defense and they are not entitled as a municipal corporation to launch any legal action against me concerning my last mail out. This is another example of how the administration is wasting your tax dollars on unnecessary legal expenses that are not in the best interest of all of us. As a new councillor, I recognize that I've made minor infractions of the community charter and the code of conduct. It is also my opinion that I'm not the only one. I've spent a considerable amount of time trying to educate myself on the procedures and, con and the contents of the community charter. At the council meetings, I try to remain calm, refrain from using profanity and name calling. I am prepared to share my perspectives on the affairs of the village and observe the actions of this council so that I may inform the residents of our progress. So rather than pursuing my goals as I stated in the campaign, I will address this legal do documentation that was presented to me and state over state my replies over the next few meetings through my council reports. If apologies are warranted, I will make them sincerely. I will use this time to clarify my position on the issues. I will continue to make concerted efforts to conduct the affairs of this village in a respectful manner and according to the code of conduct. Until the Roberts rules of orders are applied by the mayor, which doesn't sound like it's going to happen now, the mail outs will continue and I pledge to you, the taxpayer, that I will make decisions that I feel are in the best interest of the financial well-being of our community. And for the record, I have never considered the mayor in conflict of interest concerning the fire hall plan. I apologize to the mayor if this has been misunderstood and wish to set the record straight. In a democracy, there is always opposing views on the issues of the day. This is vital with creating solutions. It is no secret that the mayor and I have different views concerning the fire hall plan. I believe that the volunteer fire department requires the proper facilities to conduct their affairs and protect our investments. This is absolutely essential if we expect high quality service from our volunteers. It is after the election that I had access to the fire hall plan. It has now come to my attention that I perceived to be in conflict of interest concerning the capital projects pertaining to statements that I've made since being elected. Consider this. After all, you've paid for it. According to the Supreme Courts of Canada, the decision makers are required to maintain an open mind and be free of bias, actual or perceived. We have a duty to be impartial. The Supreme Court recognizes that elected officials arrive in office with various points of views, perceptions, ideas, and strongly held, held beliefs. And it is unrealistic to expect elected officials to shed these upon taking office. The test for bias is whether an elected official has prejudged a matter for consideration so completely as to no longer be capable of persuasion. To address this, once I was elected, I was given a binder containing information concerning the capital projects that the previous council had decided about. I had no opinions concerning the $100,000 fire hall plan before the election, and I was unfamiliar with the condition of the existing fire hall. I proceeded to read through the plan and came to the conclusion that it would be in the interest, best interest of this community to repair the existing facility. I also believe that the property on School Hill Road is an amazing opportunity. The shop on that property exceeds the building codes and the trailer would have made of excellent training facilities as well as address the administrative and sanitary requirements for our volunteers. In my opinion, the location would protect our investments from a tsunami event and any other natural disaster. Unfortunately, 
Unfortunately, though, when I was an employee of this village, I was aware of the fact that the owner did not have a high opinion of the existing administration of this village. Given the present state of affairs, I do not believe that the deal to purchase this land is possible. The mayor has also stated to me that he would, the grant would not cover the purchase of any land. In our existing fire hall, it had been, if our existing fire hall had been repaired, it would have been a wonderful opportunity to sell that existing facility and purchase the School Hill Road property and have a long-term solution that would protect our investments from any natural disasters. It was an amazing opportunity, but I realized that it's come to pass and it's no longer possible. I have a number of concerns with the conversion of the wood shop at the school. To begin with, we would not be the owners of the facilities and we would be subject to lease payments for decades to come. It is possible that the school district could decide to rebuild or expand the existing school, thus leading to the possibility of an eviction. This could end up costing the taxpayers millions of dollars to relocate, and the availability of suitable land could be very limited. The wood shop doesn't offer any significant amount of protection against a tsunami event over the existing facilities. Gaining access to the wood shop during a flooding event would be very restrictive. The wood shop is very close to an aggressive slope that has a number of boulders that have landed close by, and from my perspective, this type of event could repeat itself due to an earthquake. I also feel that the health and safety of the students would be in jeopardy having a first responder facility located on the property. It is no secret that the members of the fire department have been known to drive above the speed limits to and from the fire hall in the interest of the public. However, this could put our students at risk and possibly lead to a tragic event. It is common knowledge amongst all first responders that they try to avoid school zones whenever possible. Fire departments have been known to store hazardous chemicals and this is also a concern when it comes to the safety of our students. Another aspect of the plan was the fact that the wood shop is considerably older than the existing facilities and was slated to be torn down. These are some of the reasons why I disagree with the $100,000 fire hall plan. There are financial considerations. We would also lose a considerable amount of equity in our most moderate facility and be responsible for cost overruns on a leased property with high interest rates. After numerous discussions with local contractors and having some experience with foundations and drainage issues, I believe that the existing fire hall can be repaired and brought back online within the financial limits of the grant that the village has applied for. I also believe that the residents of this village should be given the opportunity to choose whether we relocate to the wood shop or repair the existing facilities within a referendum. As a councillor of the village, I would feel morally obligated to support the outcome of the referendum. I believe that it's in all our interest for the mayor to announce a date for the referendum so we can move forward and start working on a solution that has the approval of the community. In the meantime, I do not feel that I'm in conflict of interest pertaining to the fire hall plan. Unlike the two re-elected councillors, I have no family ties to the fire department and I have no more culinary interest than any other taxpayer in this village and I, too, want to bring this matter to a successful conclusion so that our volunteer fire department has a suitable location to serve our community. As far as the wastewater treatment project, I stated at a council meeting that I was in favor of the grant. It was an excellent opportunity to phase out the dysfunctional north sewage treatment plant and redirect the wastewater to the south plant. The south plant is an excellent design that can accommodate up to 5,000 residents. This is a great opportunity for the village. However, I am not in favor of borrowing $490,000 and be responsible for cost overruns. We need to replenish our cash reserves so that we can afford these opportunities when they present themselves. I voted against the plan to borrow the funds for the $1.3 million Phase 1 grant because I firmly believe that these types of grants will be available in the future. The second phase of the grant was not approved by the ministry. I was outvoted on this motion and the village is making arrangements to proceed with loan authorizations for $490,000 to get the ball rolling. At 4.5% interest over 30 years, that will amount to over $400,000 in interest, a payment of approximately $2,500 a month, with a total of $893 paid back for our portion of the grant. We should mandate our councils to save funds before committing to these types of grants and not enter into a deficit that exceeds their term of office. 
This will have a negative impact on the abilities of future councils and affect our taxation for the next 30 years. I have clearly stated why I am against this project and declare myself not in conflict of interest. This is a colossal mistake that has long-term effects on this community. And in my opinion, if the council proceeds to put this village in debt, it will go down in history as the most irresponsible administration in the history of this village. As far as the community dock project, this has been rather a controversial topic in our community considering how the council voted to proceed with a plan that did not impress the public. After criticizing the plan in my last mail out, I was getting ready to throw in the towel and just accept it. However, a number of residents approached me with their concerns and frustrations that this plan would not serve the interest of our community and it would have a negative impact on the economic growth. Even though tensions were high between the mayor and myself, I didn't want to miss this opportunity and to have the plan to have the plan reconsidered. What the mayor considers to be an unsolicited visit, I felt our discussions were friendly and showing signs that would improve our ability to work together as a team. I was also hoping to lower tensions and emotions with debating opposing views. It was commendable. It's commendable when one feels passionate in their beliefs. But it should have a negative impact on their ability to discuss opposing ideas in a respectful manner. I thought I was making progress and it was great to even share a few laughs. It had been long overdue uh, for this friendly visit in my mind. We discussed the community doc and I believe that the mayor recognized that the plan could be improved. I proposed that we need to bring forth a motion to reconsider. I informed him that the community charter states that this type of motion can only be brought forth by an official who voted in favor of the original motion. I then proposed to the mayor that we put this, put forth a motion uh, and move it to a committee made up of experienced residents and myself. I promised that the sketch would be put forth to the engineers without delay and I would contact Con Councillor Joseph, who also voted no, and discuss with her the needed support 